just before we get started, um, I wanted to thank you for taking the time. We're going to be uh, on schedule today. We'll do a brief introduction, um, get into about 20 minutes or so of ExoCAD related, um, uh, and then printing related, sorry, design related, print related, and then we'll do a Q&A at the end. Uh, so that's what to expect. Now, as for our topic today, you all know why you're here, and that is to talk about white splints. Uh, you know, we should start by the definition. Occlusal bite splints are used for the treatment of uh, occlusal and sizal attrition, otherwise known as bruxism. And, you know, even if complete remission of bruxism is not attained, the splint eliminates further nocturnal abrasion, keeping the patient's teeth apart at night, preventing most of the effects of bruxing. Now, who wants to make me one? Anybody? Nobody. I wonder why that is. Maybe it's because the traditional process of making a bite splint is a pain in the you know what. There are many steps involved. It's kind of complicated. And let's be honest, the results aren't always consistent. It depends who's working that day, what mood they're in, how sharp their tools are, etc. There's lots of variables. So luckily for everybody on this call, we live in a world where there are more alternatives than ever before to produce many dental appliances, including bite splints. So today we're going to show you what we feel is a very easy and straightforward approach to harness digital technology that's available to you to digitally design and then manufacture with the power of 3D printing an occlusal bite splint. So let's get started. First quick introduction, I'm Scott Corman. I'm here with Proto 3000, I'm the dental division manager. I have on the call here my uh, CAD CAM specialist, uh, dental technician Kave Shams. Say hi, Kave. Um, hey, Kave, you're on mute. Do you want to pop off mute for a second? Hello. Hello. Hi. My name is Kave. I'm a CAD CAM specialist, as Scott said, at Proto 3000. Perfect. Perfect. Um, and then we've partnered with two companies today. Uh, on the design side, uh, we've partnered with ExoCAD. Uh, it's a great relationship we have with them. Uh, today we have both Dave and Lucas on the call. Uh, Lucas, do you want to say hello? And Hey, everyone. Yeah, Lucas Chardulo, Application Support Engineer at ExoCAD America. Great to be here. Great. Great. Thank you, Lucas. And we have Dave. Yeah. Dave Carriera, uh, Marketing Director for ExoCAD America. Fantastic. So that's the design side with ExoCAD. On the manufacturing side, uh, we have partnered with Rapid Shape out of Germany. Fantastic partnership, uh, high quality products, and amazing people. So we've got here Karsten. Say hello, Karsten. Hi, together. Okay, there's Karsten. I think we see Frederick in the back. Hi. Frederick. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Okay. Oh, and there's Eva. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi, Eva. So uh, yeah, we're dialing in from all over the world for this today. We appreciate you guys doing the same. Uh, looks like we uh, are good technically. Everyone can hear everybody. Uh, and it's about 10 after 12. So uh, time to pass it over to ExoCAD. Uh, they will screen share the software with you and walk you through step-by-step step, uh, the process showing you how easy it is to digitally design a bite splint. Uh, over to you, Dave and Lucas. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Scott. So we're just going to get started really quick with a, just a, a broad overview of what ExoCAD is for those who are unfamiliar with our company. ExoCAD is, uh, is based on a digital platform for, for dentistry. And uh, what we mean by that is that we integrate with uh, original equipment manufacturers on the scanning and production side. And what we provide is uh, everything in between. So uh, that means that, that we're involved in designing various indications, uh, either on the lab side, chair side, and most recently we've uh, also uh, gotten involved with implant planning and surgical guide design as well. Next. A quick overview of our available modules, uh, because uh, it is a modular software, you, you pay for what you need, and um, we essentially provide you with with a core um, core product that pretty much captures all of your fixed restorations that that includes um, crowns bridges veneers inlay onlay uh, and then on top of that 
you have the various uh, specialty modules that, that you see there on the screen. Uh, so today we're, we're really just going to focus on, on some of the more commonly used modules for uh, 3D printing uh, and ending with a live demo of the uh, bike splint process. All right, so um, what you're seeing there is uh, some, some video playback of uh, some of our uh, design scenes. Uh, there you'll see model creator with removable dies. Uh, we also have the ability to add um, uh, some, some gingiva material if you have to segment that to, to print in a different material. Um, you'll, you'll see there the adaptation of a temporary crown. So if, if a patient presents with a uh, with an existing uh, existing dentition that's going to be removed, you can uh, quickly generate a temporary crown for that. And then at the at the top right, uh, the digital dentures, which is a, a very hot topic right now. Um, highly recommend anyone that that has a three D printer to start exploring uh, this indication. All right, next, and. Uh, with digital dentures, you also have um, various manufacturing methods. So you, you may uh, find that you have to utilize, um, you know, carded teeth. Uh, so in that case, you may just want to print out the, the base and insert those, those carded teeth. Or uh, if you're printing or, or manufacturing the, uh, the teeth in a different way, you actually have complete control in the software to to customize that dentition for each uh, situation. Uh, so that, that's a very exciting uh, new module, and, or actually enhanced module. We've, we've been with uh, digital dentures, I believe since 2016 or so was the first release, but um, in this last release, there, there were some major improvements that really extended that functionality. Uh, and I think now we're ready for the uh, live demo. All right, yeah, let's switch over to our CAD software here. So this is this is a, a byte split already pulled up in CAD software. Just a quick note about our user interface here. So ExoCAD, all the modules have a really easy, intuitive, quick to learn interface. So our main toolbar on the right side, and then on the lower left corner is our wizard. So that will prompt us through the design process and show all the relevant tools and settings as we go through and take us through the whole design process. So specific to our splint design here, we have our scan imported. And our first step here is just to set the insertion direction for the splint and then set some parameters that control the, the fit and underside of the splint here. Dave, did you want to add any material specific um, points here? Um, well, actually, uh, we, we were in discussion with, uh, with the Proto 3000 group as well as Rapid Shape, and um, they've, they've reported that the default parameters that come with the software are a fantastic starting point, um, and we're going to see them present uh, and actually or a, a model and a bite splint that was, uh, that was designed and manufactured. And uh, you'll, you'll be able to just assess the fit virtually here um, on, on how well that was produced. Uh, there are some, some other parameters there, like allow undercuts to. Uh, that's a really nice one if, if you want kind of like a snap fit over the, over the denture teeth. Or sorry, not, I was talking dentures earlier. Um, over, over the dentition. So uh, you'll, you'll have the height of contour. And then below that, you have... Um, blockout material that is added on virtually to the model. And um, what we can uh, instruct the software to do is to allow undercuts up to a certain amount. And that's really difficult to do in a, um, in a laboratory environment, you know, unless you're using a, a survey table and, uh, you know, specialty tools for that. Uh, and you have to be very exact on your path of insertion. Um, with, with this, it's really just a, a modification to this parameter and you hit apply and everything is done. So uh, that's some great functionality there um, that you'll really uh, see and understand once you start doing virtual designs. 
Yeah, great. Yeah, a lot of control over, over the fits here. Um, what we're seeing on the screen now is where the software virtually blacked out undercut. So we have some color mapping there. Another great tool at this step is our freeforming tab. We can go in and we can customize that blackout. We can use the wax knife tools and add additional blackout here as indicated by the color map here. And that again, lets you further customize and, and enhance fits if you need more of an active uh, snap-on fit there. Down in the lower left corner, you can see our um, color chart indicating how much um, undercut depth we have there. So once we have these steps complete, we're ready to click next and go to the next step in the software. Hey, Lucas, can I interrupt you just for a moment? Yeah, sure. Try to minimize the speaker panel to your right. It appears to be blocking part of the software from the viewers. Gotcha. There we go. I look better. Yeah, you got it. There it is. Thank you. So the next step in the wizard, this is prompting us, this is an optional module, but really critical and useful for, for byte splints as a virtual articulator module. So I'm gonna click start virtual articulator. That's gonna load up a sub panel here. We can load one of 12 different articulator modules, uh, articulators. So this message is indicating that the scans came in already opened. So we're gonna click it's okay. We can see that our virtual articulator on the screen um, all the adjustments that are on the articulator physically can be adjusted in the software here as well. Common application for splints is to adjust the byte opening. So we're going to open this up 1.75 millimeters here just to allow um, space for our material. Yeah. And uh, a comment there while, while this is calculating, um, you can see that the, the articulator will, will now start moving into those uh, positions there. But if you are receiving cases from a clinician with an intraoral scan, uh, normally the software algorithms that align those arches will, um, will have the patient or at least the manufacturers instruct the doctor to do that in a closed bite position. So if you do receive cases where they're completely closed, uh, as, as Lucas mentioned, opening of the bite is available here on the articulator and then that opens it in uh, at the axes that the models are positioned in virtually in that articulator, just, just as it would on your desktop. Um, one recommendation that you can make for your providers is to actually insert some um, impression material between the teeth at the desired uh, opening and um, also communicate any minimum thickness requirements that you have for your plastics. So if, uh, if the 3D printed material requires a 1.5 millimeter thickness, uh, you want to make sure that that's also communicated in that relationship and that'll give you the best results. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to click okay here and save the calculated articulator movements back to the wizard panel. We'll click next again. So now we're at uh, the primary design step for our splint here. So here we're going to be placing points on the model. Actually we'll set our occlusal thickness first. So default is 2.5 uh, for our selected material. We're just gonna go ahead and bump that up to four. What that's gonna do is just give us more thickness of material to start with um, for our future steps here. So it's gonna left click and start placing points on the model to outline the margin where we want that white split material to extend on our model. Yeah, and there's a couple of approaches that, that you can take here in this step. Um, what, what Lucas was adjusting there is the occlusal thickness. Once, once he defines this profile, um, the software will add the desired thickness to that in, in the occlusal direction. And there's also an additional parameter for the peripheral thickness. So that's the thickness along the axial wall of, of the teeth and, and the model there. Um, so the approach that we're taking here is more of a subtractive uh, when it comes to the design, you'll see that once it calculates, it's going to be a big bulk um, template that, that appears there on the screen. And on the next step, uh, we can have the software automatically remove any of those dynamic interferences that we achieved during those articulator movements that, that we previously calculated. Uh, so this is a, a really quick and easy approach to designing a bite splint. And I think you'll appreciate that. The other approach is, of course, to just maybe start with your minimum thickness and then manually add to, to achieve the contact areas that, that you want. 
Uh, so go ahead and, and uh, move to the next scene there, Lucas. Yeah, oh. let's go over to the uh, posterior area tab. So this is a great tool that automates that step of flattening the posterior section. So I'm just marking, <clears throat> clicking on the bite splint in two areas just to indicate where we're going to section off our posterior teeth. And then our setting down here, we can set the desired um, impression depth of the Posing teeth. So we'll leave that at 0.4 and see how that looks it's on the posterior section here. And then our color map here, we can change that. So let's switch over to showing contacts. So I can see currently where we're contacting the material. So we'll go ahead and click next here. Now we're at the freeform step in the wizard. So a lot of tools here to customize and, and finalize our shape of the splint. So I'm gonna go over to the adapt tab. What this is gonna do is remove any material um, where the opposing is interfering. And it's gonna take into account, since we went through the virtual articulator, dynamic occlusion and, and remove material according to the uh, articulator movements as well. So we'll go ahead and click cut intersections. You can see a lot of material removed from the bite splint here. From here, let's usually go over to the free tab, go over to our smooth tool, make the brush size pretty large. Let's go through some smoothing operations here. So what we're doing is just blending in all those areas where material was removed from that adapt step, smoothing the contours in our splint a little bit here. And the whole time we can still see from the color map where our contact areas are. Lucas, go ahead and move uh, into a protrusive movement there on the articulator slider. Yeah, in the upper right corner, we're gonna move this slider. So you can see how that uh, transitions there towards the anterior as the patient uh, would, would maybe start to disclude on, on the uh, posterior. And at any of these points, you can uh, let's say you wanted to ensure that you had a lot of stability in this particular point. Uh, you can go ahead and just maybe add the missing contact points there on the anterior, just like that. So it really gives you a great starting point. Of course, um, even today with desktop articulators, uh, there is still some refinement that has to be done chair side, uh, unless you're doing a face bow transfer and, you know, that's, pretty atypical when it comes to a bite splint. Um, but, you know, this will get you so much further and with very consistent results that when the, the provider receives this back, um, they should have very minimal adjustments to make there. Yeah, I'm just continuing to use the um, freeform tools here. You can customize those contact points. I'm just using the subtract tool just to make the, some of these points a little lighter here. Then once you've um, finalized your contact areas and overall shape of the splint, we're finished with the freeform step. So let's click next. So at this point, the software is going to save our splint design as an STL file in our software. And then from that point, we're ready to move on to the next step in the process and see how these get fabricated. Well, Scott, we're finished on the software section. I'll kick it back over to you. Okay, great, fantastic. The insight into the design element, I think that's where a lot of us get lost often. Um, the start is the hard part and uh, the design is where we always start. Uh, so we're now uh, just approaching 1230. We're a little ahead, which is great. Uh, we're gonna now pass it over to Karsten and his team in Germany. Uh, they will show you a demonstration of the physical hardware, the rapid shape printer, uh, take you through that process. And then we'll open it up to Q&A and we're planning to finish up by 1 p.m. All right, Karsten, uh, if you're ready, uh, you can go ahead and share your screen and there you go. Take it away. So hi together. Thanks for having us today. Uh, we are very happy to be part of this webinar. And like we said, we are three guys uh, currently sitting here in Heimsheim, Southern Germany. Sorry for not speaking in, uh, in mother tongue English. Uh, but hopefully it will be everything okay with you. Um, I do have right hand side for me here, Eva. 
Eva will start in the very next minutes to present you a rough introduction to RapidShape and what is RapidShape history and all about. And left hand side, like we introduced right. Frederick, the product manager responsible for 3D printing and uh, the resins, he will guide us through the job preparation and the 3D printer. Eva, the stage is yours. Thank you very much, Carsten. Um, so before we will go on in our digital workflow, I would like to introduce our company Rapid Shape. So who are we? We are manufacturer of professional 3D printers and post-process equipment. The company is founded in 2011 and we are based in Germany as we are a German company. At the moment, we have around about 150 employees and um, as we are a technical driven company, we have around about 35% of our staff in R&D, service application and also consulting. Our vision is, we believe that good should always be simple. This power drives us every day to continuously develop our solutions around the work of our customers and help them to make a difference in people's work. So we are at the moment represented in four different branches. Um, so there we have the hearing aid industry. We are their market leader and established. And we are also in jewelry industry. That is the market where we come from. Of course, we are in the dental market. And last year, we also started in industry with our industry series with our partnership together with Henkel. We are very service oriented and um, we are always on your side, which you can see here in our big map. Um, we have a service office in Andover in the USA. Um, so we are very, um, very important and we are reachable in the North American market. Furthermore, we have a service office in Curitiba in Brazil. And on the other side of the world, we are represented in Tokyo, in Japan, and in Wuxi, China. Of course, we also have a service department in Germany in our location, Heimsheim. Here you can see our installed base all around the world. And I would like to mention to you that we have now at the moment installed about more than 2,000 installed 3D printers only in the dental market. There are also more than 1,000 3D printers in the other three sectors. On the um, graph in the right hand side, you can see our growth. So you can see from the red line that our company is um, growing and um, we are um, st steeply rated, uh, yeah, rapidly going up. So um, then, of course, material is very important because the material drives the printers and um, we are working with our certified material partners and we have them directly on our side. Here you have a little overview and um, it is, of course, Deltamate, Detox, Voco, DMT, Rewe and, of course, Keystone with the soft splints, which is also very important in our today's webinar. Um, furthermore, we also have Ila um, in Brazil, Lei in China, and GC mostly in Europe. Here you can see our product portfolio for our 3D printers in the dental market. And beginning from the left-hand side, you can see our D10+. Plus. This is our solution for our chair side, for the, um, especially for dentists. Then our D20 plus, this is um, for our labs, um, sizable and um, small labs, and also for some um, beginners which would like to start um, with the 3D printing, and then the D30 plus and the D42. And these are for professional and big labs. Furthermore, we also have a special printer for ortho models, and this is the D30 plus ortho. Also on our side, we have our own post-processing machines and these are the RS Wash and the RS Cure. On the right-hand side, you can also see that we are into the industrial production with the big, big printers. And you can print with that a large amount of 
um, indications and it is of course for the cereal production. And you can extend that also in a complete production line. And now we will, today we will focus on our D20 Plus, which you can also see here on the back. And I would like to hand over to Frederick and he will now introduce you our slicing software network. Okay, hello again, my name is Frederick and today I will show you the manual workflow in our slicing software NetFab. Okay, let's start. First of all, you can see here the build rate of the D20 Plus, our lab side solution. Um, and for starting the workflow, you can see on the right side the like kind of a wizard, the same like um, in Exocad. First, you can choose the correct workflow. Today, we choose the manual workflow. And the second part, the choose, you choose the D20 Plus, the platform, and last but not least, the material. So, when the Ether told before, today we will print with the RS Plin Soft manufactured by Keystone. The workflow is very easy. <laughs> the workflow is very easy. First, you have to push this button, load parts, and import the execute based SDL file. Now you can see the, the upper jaw splint. And we see different colored arrows you can move the splint on the build plate in the, in the right or in the final position. In this case, we will print the splint with an angulation of 15, like this orientation. Make a reposition and go to the next step. And the next step is here you can see at support. In the support area, you have different options. The first and the second option is to import external support um, based on CID data, for example, execute today. The third one is the custom support, support script. And we will uh, use today the integrated support script. It's the search regal guide support script. Why search regal guide? Because it's compatible with the um, splint support. Okay, now we can perform this. <clears throat> Um, NetFab, so our slicing software based on Autodesk. Yeah, Autodesk is a very, a very big company in the soft uh, in the software, and um, it's completely open. So you can use SDL files um, with or without metadata. Exocad, it's the construction info. Okay, after calculation, here you can see all supports. And for the best print results, we use a base plate. Yeah. And you can see here on the right side again, the button create base plate and different options. Today, we use the shadow of parts option with a structure of a hexagonal grid. So we say perform and the software calculate And after that, we have the special base plate for printing. It looks like this. And after checking our design, we can push the button create build and the slicing process starts. It takes a few seconds. And after that, you have two options. The first option is to send it directly to the printer. 
And the second option is to save it on a USB stick, for example, and put some USB stick manually inside our printing E20 plus system. Okay. So you can see a calculation time of around about 20 minutes. Um, and now we see the preview with all informations about our object and our slicing parameters. And here you can see the different parts. Send it to printer, save as a file. And yes, today we send it directly to the printer. And that's all very easy, very smart. And yeah, that is NetFab. Thank you very much. So, yeah, like Frederick told us, uh, it's just a few buttons to click, just a few clicks to do to prepare the print job. And um, I normally prepare to, uh, prefer to have the printer direct um, connected wireless or, or via LAN to the preparation system. So in the moment when Frederick now clicked the button to send the, the file to the, to the printer, uh, the printer starts to print. And uh, like he said, approximately 20 minutes and the, the splint will be printed. So fortunately, we do not have to wait for all those 20 minutes. I can go shortly to the printer. Allow me to go here. And you can see uh, the printer finally has done this print job. And we can remove here the build plate and to have the printed by splint on hand. Give me the opportunity to show you a little bit um, some information about our printers and uh, the posturing units. Um, like Eva also presented, car, um, today we printed this uh, white splint with a D20 plus machine and we post cured it with the RS wash and the RS cure. Speaking about this D20 plus machine, um, it's um, a machine Eva also mentioned, specially made for the introduction for the starting in a, in a laboratory. It's the smallest uh, laboratory machine we do have on hand, scalable up to the D30 the D, and the D42. This D20 plus does have a build area of 133 multiplied by 75 millimeters. The light source is 385 nanometers, um, especially made for those dental um, resins. And speaking about accuracy, this printer does have a native pixel accuracy of plus minus 34 micron. This is absolutely great. I absolutely love this. And um, referring back to the question or, or, or to the statement of Frederick, why we are capable to print in only 20 to 25 minutes. This is because of Rapid Shape does use a very special technology called the forced feedback technology giving you a rough insight into print technologies. The very first 3D printing technologies, we can see it here on the slide left, left hand side, was SLA technology. This is a laser beam running each layer by layer, each point by each point. And this is why SLA is quite slow. The next evolution was the DLP printing, the digital light processing. And this is a full entire layer is lighted in, a, in the same moment. Um, this is much quicker and much faster than SLA, but still increasable. You can see the graph right hand side by the force feedback technology. Giving you an insight into the force feedback technology, left hand side, this is a normal DLP printer, right hand side, this is a rapid shape printer, including the force feedback technology. This is in every moment uh, when the product is removed from the build area, we do have a force. Uh, measurement and we can run each single layer in the perfect removal um, run, um, especially made for this single layer. And this increased the speed by, by high. And this is why Rapid Shape Printer can print a byte splint in 20 up to 25 minutes. So the next step, and allow me to show it to you in, in real again, we take our byte splint. Our white splint is printed. Our white splint is now removed from the building plate. And we feed this white splint into the RS wash. This is the RS wash machine. Like you can see, just open the machine, put it in, close the machine. We do have here multiple materials available. In the moment when the machines are interconnected, we do have the possibility to have the perfect data set preset. You only need to press the start button and I can show you here in a short video how this works. So, white splint is included in this uh, washing chamber. 
the washing fluid EPA base increases the level. We do have swills to verbal um, the liquid and uh, via two process steps, a pre-cleaning and, uh, and the main cleaning in six to eight minutes, this bite splint, this bite splint is fully cleaned. No EPA and uh, no um, uh, uncured resin is in the surface. Next step is our RS cure. This is the light curing machine. And like I have done it before, I will jump again here. So the cleaning process is done. Our bites and now is EPA based clean with no uncured resin on the surface. And we feed it here in into the RS um, uh, clean. And we close the, the, the machine. And the same thing like before, we have multiple materials and the data sets available. When the machines are connected wireless or via LAN, you only need to press the start button. And after some minutes, um, four to eight minutes, you can remove this bite splint and have a fully entire finalized product like you can see it. Let's do like this, like you can see it here, just removing the um, support structures um, and it's finally printed. This is the process starting with the preparation um, in the CAT system, transferring into the NetFab system, preparation uh, the, of the print shop, and afterwards transferred to the printer, to the RS wash, and to the RS cure. This is the production process of a bite splint we all together would like to present to you.